Coming up on Small Town Big Deal. We'll have some good, clean fun. All right. Then, this space-age farm might just be the biggest of its kind in the world. And a big part of solving the world's food shortage. This is what farming is in 2021. Welcome to Small Town Big Deal. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. You know, every Father's Day weekend, a clean sound washes through the streets of Logan, Ohio. Listen carefully and you'll learn how those who visit here spend the weekend getting their groove on. I think it's an instrument that looks simple to play. As long as you've got rhythm, it's not that difficult to get onto it. doesn't take talent. You just need some rhythm. What if you That's don't have you any rhythm? If you don't have any rhythm, what can I say? Welcome to the Washboard Festival, a celebration of a humble home device that can keep clothing clean and keep time with the music. The party is in Southeast Ohio, about 50 miles from Columbus on the edge of the Appalachian Mountains in Hawking Hills. The Hawking County seat is Logan, population about 7,000 people. In the heart of Logan is a factory that's been instrumental in keeping the washboard music tradition alive. The Columbus Washboard Company is the only company in America that still makes washboards. You can't miss it. Just look for the building with the world's biggest washboard hanging on it and come inside. Is it washboard or washboard? It's washboard where I come from. Washboard? <laughs> it's I used washboard. Know washboard. 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 Don't make fun of the way I talk. Well, whether you call it a washboard or a washboard, if it's made in the USA, it's made right here. Some of the machinery dates back to the 1930s. The company started up in 1895. It almost went under about a hundred years later, but it was saved by investors who wanted to preserve history. For James Martin, that project brought him from London to Logan. How did it come about that you bought a washboard factory? Well, I'm um, just as surprised as you are, to be honest. Uh... <laughs> James was selling old-fashioned soaps online, and business was bubbly. I started manufacturing some carbolic soap in small batches. Carbolic soap itself is a laundry soap, so you can use it for everything. You can use it for household, you can use it for yourself, you can use it for whatever. Um, so the natural thing was that people then started asking me for washboards, and here we are now. <laughs> I mean, not only did you buy a washboard factory, you moved from England to the United States That's to do right. this. Yeah, absolutely. And I tell you what, when the, I first came to Logan, Ohio, I absolutely fell in love with the town. Small town Appalachia is something very unique. I just felt like I was at home. We got a lesson in using horse boards from Jackie Barnett, another owner of the horse board company. She hails from New Zealand. You gotta love America. So Jackie's from New Zealand, James is from England, they're in Appalachia, and they saved a washboard factory. Go USA. Okay, you bring it up, you rub the clothing on the soap. This is your soap tray right here. You may have to balance it with your finger. Oh, you get lots of soap on there, and then you just scrub until you make suds. Look at those oh, suds. Look at your suds. Let me talk about the ridges. Yeah. This is your side that you actually would do your scrubbing, scrubbing your socks, your stains, and your jeans and stuff. Now flip it around, and that's a softer, smoother crimp on here, and this is the lingerie side. So this side, Rodney, is where, when you want to wash all your lingerie. Yeah, okay? Gotcha. <laughs> I want that to be nice and soft. Well, I'm glad to learn this, but I don't want to get too good at it. <laughs> you can have new chores at home, right? Yeah. <laughs> so about how many washboards do you still sell a year? Well, anything from 20,000 upwards. And, and what was the peak when, when production was at its peak for the company? It was actually 1941, and we did 1.4 million washboards that year. 
During World War II, metal went to the war effort, so the Columbus Warsboard Company started making warsboards with scrubbing surfaces made of wood and glass instead of metal. Another historic event, the COVID pandemic led to a sales spike in 2020. So during the pandemic, yes. people weren't going out to the laundromat. That's right, we were selling them all to uh, all of the big cities, Chicago, New York, LA, you know, anywhere that um, people live in sort of apartments and places like that. One other place washboards are popular, believe it or not, is in war zones. We've sent over 6,000 washboard kits uh, over to the troops overseas. It's all done by donations, and we get a wash tub, clothesline, soap, a washboard, and of course directions on how to use it, because these are folks in their 20s and 30s, and they don't necessarily know how a washboard is used. Over the years, soldiers and Marines have sent thank you notes and photos. In our travels, we've seen a lot of ways that small towns support our troops. But Operation Warsboard is one of a kind. Coming up, an unexpected detour on the way to the Washboard Festival. And Rodney and I go head to head in a Washboard Battle for the Ages. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. If there's one thing we've learned about Logan, Ohio, it's that every day is laundry day. And since the Washboard Festival always falls on Father's Day weekend, I got you a Father's Day present. Are you ready? A washboard tie? <laughs> yeah! Thank you, I, I think. Oh, it's you! <laughs> One thing you notice pretty quickly at Washboard Fest, it's all about accessories. Customization is key. Measuring cups. Measuring cups and cowbell. And then I got the train whistle. <laughs> Half the fun for me was finding all this stuff in pawn shops and flea markets and then figuring out how to put it all together. I have some pans down here and a wood block, some bells, my duck. My sick cow call, the slide whistle. The Lord said, make a joyful noise, and this is about as joyful as we can get. And it's noisy. <laughs> Jen and I decided to join in wow. the joyful noise making with a little help from a washboard player and customizer who loves to share what he knows. He goes by Uncle Willie. May I? OK, yes, you may. Well, that's a little more than a washboard. That's a one-man band. This looks like knight's armor. One spoon for you. Oh, I have a spoon? OK. You could never just sit down at a piano for the first time and start playing. But a washboard, pick it up, put it on, and you are good to go. No way is wrong when you play the washboard. I like Everything that. Everything is right when you play the washboard. Because you're so straight. <laughs> You simply cannot play the washboard and not smile. I think it's because you feel kind of silly, but I think silly is good for the soul. <laughs> we not only learned how to play a washboard, we also learned how to build one. Lisa, a very patient master washboard maker, showed us how. <laughs> but um, all of our washboards are put together by hand. But I'm starting out by taking the top of the washboard, which is called the head, uh -huh. and attaching the side of the washboard, which is called the leg, at the finger joint and setting it in this press. And then we have a foot pedal that helps push our pieces together. And these are called brand boards or name plates. And then uh, these are top rails. Piece of metal. Bottom rail. Bottom rail. And then the other leg. And then tap the pieces together. And then we nail the boards in six places. And voila. Yeah. Did you get all, get all that? Well, kind of, sort of. Like this? Ooh, I didn't pay attention if the... Rodney and I squared off head to head, trying to remember a laundry list um, of instructions. You want to turn it the other way. You make it look so easy. Well, 15 years of it, and you've got the wrong... Wrong one? Wrong rail. Oh, there's, these are different? Right. Oh. Is there a white part on this one? No. No, OK. Tell Rodney there is. <laughs> Does it matter which way, or? No. <laughs> I am going to so appreciate washboards so much more after this. And my washing machine. Okay, now I gotta, this is the tough part. Yes. Now I have to, oh, oh my gosh. 
Oh, I don't have that head, yeah. There. Do you have a pile of seconds? Like, yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. I did the wrong one. Oh. <laughs> Voila. There's a quick time I made one. <laughs> so, who's the winner? Well, I have to say that you both get 100% for effort. But I think the clear winner has to be this one because there is no additional nail. So it's going to be you. I win! Go put yours in the seconds pile. Yeah. <laughs> As we headed back to the Warsport Festival, we stopped at the Visitor Center and came across one more rarity belonging to Logan, Ohio. Another celebration of an old-fashioned technology, the pencil sharpener. There are 3,450 pencil sharpeners in here. This is a collection of Paul Johnson, and his family wanted us to be caretakers of his collection. There are president pencil sharpeners, musical pencil sharpeners, and pencil sharpeners that are out of this world. Oh, look. It's something unique. It's something different. It's something that we don't regularly see. So something like this would be fun, just to say you saw it. Back at the washboard's main stage, it's time for the washboards to take center stage. Toes tapping, people dancing, everybody in a bubbly mood. Washboard Fest is good, old-fashioned fun. Coming up next on Small Town Big Deal. This is what farming is in 2021. And you might be surprised where we found it. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. Rodney is in another small town, but he has entrusted me with a story here in Moorhead, Kentucky, which is in the heart of Appalachia. Now, this area has seen more than its fair share of economic difficulties, but there is a very special place that has begun to plant the seeds of change, and it's already bearing fruit in the most remarkable ways. This is what farming is in 2021. And this farm looks more like a big greenhouse run by NASA. And when I say big, I mean really big. It's the size of 58 football fields, and it's all under glass. It's called App Harvest, and may be part of the answer to the world's increasing demand for food. The United Nations has said we need 70% more food by 2050, and some have said we would need two planet Earths the way we currently farm today in order to produce that food. Uh, we get 30 times yield per acre. So this 60 acre farm can do the equivalent of almost 2,000 acres of open field in California or Mexico. So far, App Harvest has focused on growing that staple of the American garden, the tomato. The facility houses an incredible 720 tomato plants. On a busy day, we have about seven semi trucks of truckloads of tomatoes that go out to some of your largest grocers and fast food chains. Wow. And those trucks don't have far to go. Moorhead, which is about an hour east of Lexington, is within a day's drive to 70% of the U.S. population. Tomatoes arrive faster and fresher with much less wasted along the way than tomatoes from Mexico. But there is another reason for building this futuristic farm here. Rain. 95% of a fruit and vegetable is water. But you look at the southwest of the U.S., it's drying up. You look at California, it's drying up. Kentucky has had its wettest decade in state history this decade. All we're doing here is packaging up that rainwater into a healthy fruit and vegetable. Rainwater is all the water App Harvest needs. They capture it on the enormous roof and store it in a pond the size of 70 Olympic swimming pools. Miles of pipes delivered to the plants in precise amounts so not a drop is wasted. We filter it only with sand and UV, no chemicals. Once water enters our facility, it only leaves as a tomato. App Harvest says they use 90% less water than conventional farms and no chemicals. All sanitized. This is like a futuristic movie, but it's actually happening right now. There are driverless <laughs> electric carts and large lifts getting workers high in the air to work on the plants. So these vines get to be about 45 feet. Also, you see the amount of fruits on the vines. So we're optimizing for the plant, giving the plant exactly what it needs in a controlled environment year round. The huge plants don't even need soil. 
They grow in tiny boxes of a special growth medium. Some of the tomatoes are picked by harvesters controlled by artificial intelligence. But for now, most of the crop is picked by hand. Yeah, yeah, squeeze it hard. Wow, that's heavy. It is heavy. And then what we're going to do is this stem is too long. It has to be longer than the back fruit, but you want to cut it off like right there. Okay. And you've just harvested your first tomato that I've harvested. But how do the tomatoes taste that Nancy and the others work so hard to produce? Oh my gosh, that one tastes like a backyard tomato. You know, that's, that's the goal, right? Yeah. You know, that was real ladylike. Shortly after Jonathan perfected his product, he decided he needed some real star power to help with the marketing. Jonathan wanted Martha Stewart on his board. She said she'd evaluate his tomatoes. Can you imagine the pressure? We sent our first harvest of tomatoes up to her. We, we were terrified. Thankfully, you know, got that call the next day and, and loved the taste of the tomato. Martha joined the board, but so far not everyone is sold on Jonathan's green business. It takes a ton of energy to keep the lights on at night, and so far, the expenses have been, well, through the roof. Still, the people of Moorhead are thrilled App Harvest has come to town. Our people no longer have to leave just to survive. We can live and be profitable, and we can be part of something that's going to affect the whole world right here. Eastern Kentucky is coal mining country. And as the mines have declined, so has the fortunes of towns like Moorhead. App Harvest offers a living wage, full health care, and stock options to its employees. One thing about our people in Appalachia is that we know farming. We know how to grow things. We know how to work hard. I actually had a lot of difficulty finding a job because of my arm, which I was born this way, and I don't see it as a handicap for me, but a lot of businesses do. They see it as a liability, and I Harvest didn't. And he was like, I don't see that to be an issue at all. I think you're going to be a great fit for App Harvest. And I've been loving it every day since. Jonathan is hardworking, too. He's probably the only CEO who lives in an RV right in the parking lot of his company. And App Harvest is already thinking about the employees of the future. They've donated five hydroponic container farms to local high school ag programs. I remember the first day we got it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. I'm so excited to work in it. For us, that investment in high school education has been one of the, the best investments we've ever made. You know, those young people coming to us in five years telling us you know, how to better operate these facilities is what we're looking forward to. App Harvest has already proven that vegetables can be grown indoors year-round and on a massive scale. Whether they end up in the green or the red is yet to be seen, but Jonathan and his followers are true believers. They insist it will work. And look, farming is hard and getting consistent food supply on our shelves, it's difficult, but it's innovate or die. Can Eastern Kentucky change farming, not only in the U.S., but globally? And our short answer is absolutely. Yes. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Small Town Big Deal. You know, there are so many things about App Harvest that impressed me. I just don't have any time left on the show to go through them all, but Jonathan said you can come back for your own private tour anytime you want. Oh, I love tomatoes. Yeah. I hated to miss that segment. I know you did. <laughs> the Washboard Festival, what'd you think of that? Oh, gosh. There's, who knew you could have that much fun celebrating washboards? I did not know that. Now you're going to wash your clothes that way? <laughs> well, I doubt it, but I am glad I know how to do it. And I notice you have not put on your fabulous new tie yet. I'm Rodney Miller. That's a no. <laughs> I'm Jan Carl. Join us again next week when once again we celebrate the great stories from across America. I do watch your show. Oh, I am very familiar. You're a rascal. Uh, <laughs> I agree. You're a rascal. <laughs> do you have anything I can hit him with? Like, oh, oh. Hey. <laughs>